Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. We are talking about one of my favorite subjects today, homesteading. The world of homesteading has been on the rise lately, especially since the pandemic, especially since people's eyes have been opened to the intricacies of our government and people conspiring against normal people, China buying up farmland, learning that the health experts cannot be trusted, wondering what exactly they are advising us to eat and what exactly is in our food. Obviously, people are concerned. Gen X, millennials, Gen Z, they're getting more and more interested in finding ways to grow their own food and become more self-reliant, which is a huge win for all of us. One article says, homesteading is a growing trend among millennials. My homesteading is becoming so popular, like these articles are everywhere. If you look at Google Trends over the past couple of years, searches for homesteading, how to start a farm, how to be more reliant. I mean, they are skyrocketing like never before. But of course, like with any good thing that I want to highlight happening on the internet, there will be people trying to vilify it. And there are people trying to vilify the innocent world of homesteading too. But before we get into that, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you've not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section episode. Now, as somebody who grew up around ranches and farms, and as somebody who is literally trying to start one right now, it is extremely exciting to me to see so many people fall in love with this lifestyle, or at the very least, admire it and find inspiration there. And it's even more encouraging that it is the younger demographics that are seeing this rise in popularity. For example, here's an excerpt from Business Insider. A poll of nearly 4,000 member homesteaders published in January of 2023 found that over a quarter of respondents had been homesteading for three or fewer years. Millennials and Gen Z in particular have taken a shine to homesteading. Nearly half of the homesteaders of America poll respondents were 39 or younger. Those generations are are increasingly ditching city life, not just for the suburbs, but for exurbs and rural areas, Business Insider reported earlier this month. And I think this guy on TikTok did an excellent job of explaining why exactly he thinks that this lifestyle is on the rise, especially for young people. And this video has nearly a million likes, not just a million views, a million likes. The older generations basically destroyed the economy, sure. strip mined all of the future wealth and opportunity as well as, and most importantly, hope through their voting practices, both politically and with their wallets through investments and in what they valued. They also gave away a ton of their personal liberties in exchange for convenience and security right now. That's so important. All the while, they told the younger generation all they had to do was get good grades, go to college, get a good job, and they too will have the American dream. When the younger generation with almost infinite information at their fingertips to look up facts started to question it and it became clear to society that they could no longer perpetuate that lie, society went on the attack. They called them lazy and they said that it was because they bought avocado toast and lattes every day that they were never going to have anything in the future. Granted, it is important to note that spending $27 a day on lattes and avocado toast, that adds up to wasting $10,000 a year. That is a horrifying fact. So maybe Diane was right about that. But still, the point stands. Not all of my generation is lazy. Not all of millennials are lazy. We were dealt very difficult cards. Then one day, they were on the internet and they came across a tutorial for how to grow avocados, how to make your own sourdough bread, how to steam milk. And they realized they could make their own avocado toast and they could make their own lattes. And they didn't have to work all day and night just to make enough money to afford to keep a roof over their head and still afford to pay for a couple of the things that they felt made life worth it. So they started looking for a different path forward. So I think that is why they look to creators in the off-grid living and homesteading world and ask how. I just, I love that video. And I just love that guy. His account is Seven Kin Homestead. If you want to look him up on TikTok, I have seen his videos on my For You page. If you have not come across him before, you could add him to your daily rotation. But everything he said is completely, completely spot on. I mean, again, a million likes. The comments were incredible. Somebody said, because the system failed us completely. Somebody else said, um, not just millennials. This Gen X is all about going off grid. Just saying, you and my mom, Judy, you and Mama Coop. Somebody else said, I started homesteading videos during COVID. Now we have egg layers and I raise meat, birds, and vegetables. We produce 70% of our own food now. It's incredible. And again, this is just one part of a very, very broad trend, like being more aware of our food, what dyes are in our food, how many preservatives are in it, the stuff that is in our skincare that I talk about all the time, which is why, if you're concerned about it, you should try Alivia. Because navigating the skincare world can often feel like an insane journey with countless products promising miraculous results and then not delivering. Finding something that truly nurtures your skin and improves your skin while ensuring its safety can be daunting. Thankfully, Alivia Skincare is here to save the day. Alivia's exclusive prebiotic formulas use organic ingredients that are clean and are designed to work. And something that makes Livia stand out is their use of Acadian sea kelp in their hand wash, body wash, and so much more. And the sea kelp works at the cellular level to feed the beneficial microbiome on the face and body. This process allows the good skin microbiome to multiply much faster, release an enzyme that helps perfectly balance the skin's pH, and bring about a natural and radiant glowing complexion for every skin type. When your skin is regularly bombarded with harsh, chemically derived beauty products and environmental pollutants, your skin's natural balance is disrupted, causing irritation, acne, eczema, dry skin, premature aging, and other skin problems. Kelly Graham, the founder of Olivia, 
embarked on her own health journey after years of unsuccessful attempts with conventional medicine. Her mission is simple, to nourish your largest organ, your skin, on the outside, just as we nourish our bodies on the inside. And you can start doing that right now. When you go to Olivia.com with promo code BRETT15, you will save an additional 15% off your order. Again, that is Olivia.com, promo code BRETT15 at checkout for 15% off. You can get started on your natural journey right now with Olivia. And then you will start looking at homesteading content, then you will want chickens, and it will just spiral from there. That is the track record. And all the naysayers, it is not just the conservatives. This is not an alt-right extremist behavior. Like this person commented and said, anti-capitalists rise up, community is resistant, eco-villages in a solar punk world. And we did an episode about this relatively recently. It was less about homesteading and more about preppers. But there is also a huge rise in left-wing Gen Z preppers. They think that if Trump gets elected, civil war is going to break out. People on the right think a civil war might break out. It's better so we all just be prepared because the government could do anything at any time. We see it every day. I'm glad both sides are taking this seriously. And they certainly are because there is now a whole left side of home setting. Like just look at this video, for example. Just for voting purposes in the future of our country, I do wish that they were more right wing. That'd be great, especially since they say that they know the system is rigged. You should not vote to continue the system, but granted, both sides are part of a system that is rigged. So I understand. Anyway, I don't really care which side they're on in terms of their homesteading content. It's just great that they are embracing that and they are encouraging people because I just think it's healthier for all of us. No matter your political affiliation, no matter if you are prepping for an apocalypse or you are just trying to return to your roots, this is so much better than living in an apartment on top of a hundred other people like that guy was saying. This is so much better than eating all the terrible processed crap. This is so much better than spending hours in a cubicle inside scrolling on your phone. Like if you get to go home to this every day, gosh, it's so much better. Somebody commented and said, but I use the term solar punk instead of homesteading now as I feel its roots are more collective versus individual focused. Whatever. Somebody else said, I'm a still living homesteading girly, but in the F capitalism community building, finding joy is an active resistance way. Again, whatever floats your boat, whatever makes you happy. Somebody else said, me, I'm a queer leftist homesteader. Good for you, Lucy. Love that for you. Like, seriously, there are all different walks of life that are into homesteading. And it seems to be the one universal lifestyle that everyone can respect and appreciate, whether it's people who are doing it because of their climate change fears or their fears of government takeover. Like, there is a reason for everyone, no matter your background, to support this kind of lifestyle, to support homesteading. And perhaps, maybe, crazy idea, it's because there is an almost biological urge an instinctual response and a desire to connect back to the land in a way that humans have done since the dawn of time, until really about 100 years ago or so. Now, aside from the government and big food, who is obviously very threatened by all of this behavior and tries to make it as difficult as possible for people to acquire land and start homesteading and labels us, you know, far-right religious extremists, no matter who you are, aside from them, I thought that we were more or less all on the same page about this growing trend. I thought that we liked it. I thought it was great. I even found this one video that I wanted to film a reaction to for my channel until I saw the comments. So let's watch the video first. I think millennials are going to be the generation that simply just tried to make it work. They finally realized that the scam of convenience was making them sicker and sadder day by day. So they became more self-sufficient and they discovered traditions of old that were never taught to them and brought them back to life. I love it. That is one of my favorite reels. That is one of my favorite sounds. It's just, he hit the nail on the head. And again, I think that that is something positive that we could all agree with. Like, who could find even a shred of an issue for that video? It was peaceful, it was calming, and it was just objectively beautiful, common sense, all of it. And a lot of the comments in my first little scroll initially agreed. One person said, people have a lot of negative things to say about social media, but I love discovering that there are so many of us out here who are going back to basics. Learning from each other and teaching each other, it is a great community and it's growing. And then I scrolled a little further, literally just maybe like one swipe up, and the tone changed drastically. One person said, kind of a whitewashed colonizer take as well, though. I don't think millennials need credit. I think indigenous elders who have kept the earth alive despite the violence and the land grab do. I'm sorry, what? Obviously, there are indigenous communities that are incredible and have kept these practices alive in their own communities, but that does not take away from this woman's experience, this family's experience, or anybody else's experiences as they are having to relearn that because they do not live in those indigenous communities. Just saying, we can all have those experiences. Somebody else said, if only everyone could afford this type of peace, there isn't space for us all. Okay, you must have not driven across America, my friend, because there is literally plenty of space. Most people just don't want to live out there, farther from a city. And again, that's fine if it's not your cup of tea, but don't say that the possibility does not exist. And just because somebody cannot afford land within 20 minutes of their desired city, I mean, I couldn't do that. Like, that doesn't make this problematic, privileged, or white supremacy any of it. And again, just like basically everything in our world, we are entitled to most of the things that these people cry about online. Somebody else said, first of all, these things take time. Given that too many people, not just the happy white people in 
in this video, are struggling to survive through working the majority of their waking hours, where are they going to find the time to bake bread, preserve food, and care for a garden? This is a full-time job to have livestock and grow and forage and preserve and food. This is not possible under capitalism. I think it is. Maybe not in a government-manipulated market, but under true capitalism, under a free market, absolutely. Anyway, the millennials will not save you. By the way, I'd like to see people deliver a calf or slaughter a pig. By all means, return to the basics if you have the luxury of free time, but don't act like climate change or genocide is going to be solved by some white people growing green beans. Get activated people. Jeez. Okay. I do agree with the fact that it is incredibly hard work. And I do think that there are people online who make it look a little more idealistic than it is. You should see the way that my mom works on her farm. It is like 16 hours a day. She is up late with animals. She is delivering calves. She is calling her vet at 3 a.m. because her donkey has bloat and is laying in her arms. Like it is hard, hard work. But she also says that it's the most fulfilling thing that she's ever done besides having children. People find value in this. They're willing to sacrifice their extra time, their social time, the time that they would be on vacations or spending money going out to restaurants, bars, whatever, because this fulfills them. Just because it doesn't fulfill you in the same way doesn't mean that it is a bad thing or unattainable. People are making different choices in their life. They are prioritizing different things. That is fine. That is not a crime. It is not white supremacy. Somebody else commented and said, but first the millennial actually has to be able to afford a house in the first place to even think about having a garden. And this creator replied and said, it's not true. We have gardened in rentals for many years before we could afford to buy a home. A great way to learn, warm up, and make mistakes too before making your more permanent next garden. And I completely agree with that. In my first rental here in Nashville, I bought those like $10 felt garden bags off of Amazon. And I put them up all around my patio. And that's what I did. And I went and I bought like cheap, cheap soil from Home Depot just so I could learn because I had only ever gardened with my family. I wanted to figure out if I could do it by myself. And I could. And that was great. And I learned a lot. I didn't ruin my rental by any means, but you can. You do have the power to do that. You don't have to live on 20 acres to start thinking like this and adopting some of these habits. You don't even have to live on one acre. Like the gardens that people grow on their apartment balconies are incredible. How people design their quarter acre backyards is so efficient and smart. They sacrifice some of that space in their big backyard, but they make it work for them. And if you don't even want to do that, you can start by just spending more time looking at the ingredients in your food and finding easy ways to scale back or cook from scratch or finding ways to buy directly from farmers and ranchers in your community, which often, guys, is less expensive than trying to buy a good steak from Whole Foods. And it is one of the best ways to empower the people in this community that are making those sacrifices, that are just trying to keep their, you know, fifth generation farm open. That is the way that you can support them. You can buy directly from them. This is not something that is or should be reserved for the privilege. And if you think that it is, I might urge you to take your own attitude into account because that is where the problem might lie. We should see these homesteaders and farmers and ranchers as trailblazers, as inspirations, people who are driving our society back to health and back to our roots. That will always be a net good for society. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode of the comment section and maybe even learned something new. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and if you want some hopefully more uplifting content, you can follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. See you guys next time.